Toss out whatever happened the 10 <laughs> previous weeks. It's time to ball up once again. John, welcome to the Friday <laughs> Frenzy in the opening night of the playoffs here in Ohio and Kentucky. You can toss out about the first halves tonight, too, in some of these. <laughs> hey, let's start our coverage in the Buckeye State, where the Division I category had more than a few heavyweight fights tonight. And in Cole Rain, it was like Ali against Frazier. Nice. The, the Cardinals had won the regular season match by a couple of points. This one would be much different. Zane X scored early out of safety. Then the Cards reeled off 28 straight points. This is the first play of the second half. Deontay Smith-Moore, 80 yards to the house, and the Cardinals are just rolling in this one 28-2. Zane X tried its hardest to claw back in the game. Chris Payne, he got loose and goes 25 yards into Cole Rain territory. That was the Bombers' best sustained drive of the night. They got it inside the five, but on a fourth down and goal, Matthew Reeves' pass well covered, and it was too long. Cole Rain takes over, and that was a dangerous proposition tonight. Again, Deontay Smith Moore up the middle, and he's off running by himself again. Didn't get all the way this time. It was a 63-yard run by the time he got tracked down, so it was up to Ivan Pace Jr. to finish this one. Cole Rain went on to win this game, 35 to nine. I'm really proud how they prepared. Um, everybody gets, you know, five and five. They think that's a really good football team. We've played 19 times in 12 years. They know us. We know them. Um, we just happen to know them a little bit more tonight. It was a big one, especially with this being a big rivalry game. But it's just another game. We still have four more to get to our final goal. Hallelujah. Elder hosting Mo, my main here, my main man here. With the right idea, the Elder D put the O in Mo tonight. Michael Bittner was the GCL South Player of the Year, so of course it's Matthew Luby who scores the first points in this game. Now the Purple Panthers, West Side forever. Jake Hoffmeyer trying to avenge that regular season loss. Right there, Mike Check, Tyson, Jordan, Jackson, Bittner. Elder's quarterback showing up. B.I.G. finds Kyle Trischler in the corner, and Elder had a 14-0 lead. The Panthers surrendered a double-digit lead in the first meeting, so Tom Ramsey, of course, was still pacing in this one. Chance for Elder to go into the half up 21, but Bittner, by one of uh, the great all-time names in sports, he's picked off by Carrington Valentine here, one of the great all-time names in sports. Gus Raglan was there the last time these two met in the postseason. In fact, Mo won the title that year in 2013, but that was then. The DN Elder capitalizes on this woeful night for the Mo offense. 35 0 the final. Elder will play. Well, you'll just have to wait and see in the regional quarterfinals. Okay, let's head to Milford. They used to be in the GMC. Taking on Fairfield, they are in the GMC. Here's what we expected to see the first drive for Fairfield. Juton McLean for the Indians takes the screen pass down the sidelines. He doesn't get tackled till he reaches inside the five yard line. Fairfield would score shortly thereafter. McLean would leave the game. And then, well, it started to rain. Imagine that. And then the Eagles showed what they could do. This was a fourth down play. Quarterback Hunter Johnson finds Connor Foster wide open, tied at seven. Kind of thought Fairfield without McLean would still prevail because here's Jeff Tyus makes a pass to Peyton Brown. Check out the blocking by Caleb Sexton. Brown followed him to the end zone, and Fairfield had the lead in this one. And then it was this one that seemed to put it all out of reach. Fairfield is going to go punt the ball, but Eric All wasn't punting. He was running. He's a lanky 6'4 tight end who trucked his way all the way to the end zone. So it appeared Fairfield was rolling along. But the Milford Eagles of Tom Grippa weren't done yet. They trailed by 28 early in the second half, but they kept fighting back. With under two minutes to go in the game, Milford was still trying to win. They got it close, and then Cameron Kells went one yard into the end zone for the score, and that allowed the Eagles to push in front. Just over a minute left for Fairfield, who had to put the ball in the air, and Milford with the pick. The Eagles win in the playoffs for the first time ever, 39-35 tonight. Congratulations to them. What a monumental upset wow. that is. Brian Kastner and Mason have won their playoff opener the last two seasons. Lakota East like this ref. Not trying to hear that. East sounding off in the third. Sean Church has a six minute drive with a touchdown run, and East was up 14 to 10. Tack on three to that because Gavin Myers hits the 32 yard field goal, and the Comets, they were looking for a bright spot. Nolan McCormick, their running back, is going to provide it. He breaks three tackles en route to a 10 yard touchdown run, and we had a game, a tie game, with just under nine minutes to play in Mason. Now, East hadn't won a playoff game since 2014. 
That's all in the past now. Myers hits the game winner to send East to the quarters and a date with Elder with the 2017 win. Wow. Hey, that's the Division I, but they share the Friday night spotlight with Division II and III. And that's coming up next on The Frenzy. Winton Woods knocked off some of the best teams in greater Cincinnati. Could they play deep into the playoffs? Highlights coming up right after this.